Welcome back. So starting out the week, the first thing I wanted to do was uh, check this oil filter and just make sure it was seated correctly. Some of the people had commented there on the previous video that I may not have got the little tab that's on the bottom of the filter uh, aligned with the little uh, hole in the casing that it's supposed to sit into. So, and you know, my take on it was it was probably going to be self-aligning anyway because you wouldn't be able to tighten the, the cap all the way down unless um, that little tab thing was sitting in the hole that it's supposed to be in but anyway um, it's worthwhile checking and doing it the right way so uh, here I am just trying to get the lid off there and um, a little bit later a couple minutes later managed to get it out of there it's a little tight there I got to move some of the hoses back there um, in order to get it out and so this time instead of you know putting the lid on with the filter in there I took the filter off and you can see the little tab on the bottom there a little thing sticking out of that filter I looked to see where the hole is that it lives in and then just lined it up and uh, put it down in there rotate it around and you can feel when it uh, goes into that uh, hole into the opening there so I just made sure it was seated in there nicely and uh, you know once it was in it wouldn't rotate anymore and uh, once I had that sorted out, and I just put the uh, cap back on again and tightened it down. So uh, yeah, that's that problem double checked just to make sure everything's good on that. And obviously I hadn't started the engine yet, so there wasn't really any oil per se in that uh, in the filter it uh, yet. So it didn't make a mess or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, getting in there, um, I'm glad that I bought that. Um, the 32 mil socket for that because you could just use um, a uh, open-ended wrench on that one but it's pr it's much better to actually have a socket there with an extension because you can just come straight down on it and not have to try and get in around where all the other stuff is in there so it worked out well and uh, so now you guys can all rest comfortably knowing that I've got that filter in there correctly and uh, now I can move on to the next little job and uh, get um, you know get that sorted out. So I've got a bunch of different things still to do. I'm still waiting on this um, on that coupling to come back from the machine shop across the road. It should be this week, but with uh, Independence Day coming up on Thursday, who knows? They're probably going to drag their feet a little bit, and uh, I'm going to give them a call tomorrow and just make sure and just see that they're not running too far behind with it. Okay, so given that I'm going to um, wait for the governor to be working correctly before first flight in order to have the best power available from the engine and prop, I decided now to pitch the prop back to about 8 degrees because I had it at about 13 degrees and then when I last, last run it, it was um, 17 degrees. So at 8 degrees, um, it should have enough um, pitch on there to take the aircraft to maybe 70 knots before it starts running out of steam and uh, so I'll be able to use that setting for some high-speed taxi tests you know just up to about sort of 50 knots or so maybe 55 knots um, just to you know to test the rudder um, authority and also just make sure the ailerons are giving a little bit of lift on the wings and then ultimately possibly maybe even uh, be able to get the nose wheel off uh, before it's taken into ground effect and uh, a lot of that's going to depend on when this coupling comes back and how much time that I have because uh, Oshkosh is coming up and I'll be up there I'm probably going to go up a little bit early and um, so I may be um, only having like another week or so working on the things that I need to do on this before heading up that way or maybe even heading um, over to my place in Arkansas for a few days beforehand because I've got some things I need to do over there as well. Uh, so anyway, got that pitched back to 8 degrees and uh, the next thing was to uh, torque the bolts there uh, on the wing. So um, last week I didn't quite have the adapter I needed which was basically a, a 3 8 to quarter adapter because you can't really find a socket that's... Um, 15 sixteenths and that's the size that that goes on these uh, a and 10 bolts you can't find one that has um, a uh, 3 8 inch um, connection there for the torque wrench so I had to get an adapter that took the 3 8 to a half inch and then the 15 16 socket fits the half inch 
Uh, so anyway, that's why I didn't do it last week. And then uh, what I'm taking it there to is 100 foot pounds. And uh, what I did was, um, as you can see there, I'm putting the other wrench in there that I have, the ratchet there, and putting it on with another socket on the bolt head side, and then just keying it so at the end of the wrench there, or the end of the ratchet is sitting, sitting up against the skin inside the the um, the wing there. That way it won't move when I start um, cranking on the nut. And it takes quite a bit of effort there. 100 pounds is um, quite a bit of effort there on a slippery floor and with really nothing to grab onto. So um, I had to sort of wedge myself underneath the aircraft there. And this torque wrench is cool in that it has the uh, digital display but it doesn't um, you can't dial it in for a particular setting and then just wait to hear it click so that's a bit of a downside so you kind of have to be like one eye on the display there to see where you're at um, and, and to know when to stop so I'm just sort of looking at it right there and here I'm about 90 something pounds and just wait until it goes over 100 pounds and um, yeah I managed to get it there so uh, that was the that was the uh, second one done and now these are the ones um, the root ones there and so there's the uh, bolt head there inside the wing and I did the same thing basically taking the the other ratchet that I had there with the socket and put it inside the wing there put the socket on the bolt head and then just clock the um, the ratchet there so the end of it is up against the inside skin um, of the wing that way it won't move when I start cranking on the other side. So, uh, it's, you know, you have to improvise when you're the only one there. You don't have anyone else to hold on to the other end for you. So uh, there, I've got the um, torque wrench on this side again. So this is the same one I was just doing there. I put the socket on the inside. And I don't know if you can see the numbers from here with this video. But um, again, just took this one just over 100. And it seems like a lot, but that's the spec that you need for um, these uh, A and 10 bolts. So I got the f the four done on the wings, and then I still got to do the uh, the A and sixes that are on the leading edge ones. But I'm waiting. I haven't ordered yet um, the metal locking nuts for those because I just you know, I got them in my um, in my cart there for a spruce, but. I wanted to wait and see if there's anything else I needed to order uh, before I go ahead and just order uh, two different uh, metal locking nuts. A um, bit of a waste with shipping and such. And actually, I may just run down and get some from the guys down at the uh, SNS Aviation instead. It's not a bad idea. Should have thought of that. And another thing I fixed on Monday was a little bit of noise coming from the rudder pedals when you uh, went to full lock on the one side. And it turns out that that right end there in the middle there was touching the outer edge of that was touching the aluminum bracket there and so I had to just clear that out a little bit and when I did that um, moved nicely now it didn't have any sort of friction or noise or any clicking or anything like that so that's that job done and that was all for everything for Monday and now we're on to Tuesday or today and so these uh, little boots that I ordered came in and so the job of these things is to cover up the all the different positive terminals throughout the aircraft so there's no chance of anything hitting those and uh, creating a short so uh, yeah it was just going through all the different ones there and putting one some are a little bit tricky to get on because you've got multiple wires going through there or um, the ones with the larger um, heads on them like this one um, those can be a little bit more tricky to get on there but I think I used all eight of the ones that I ordered and uh, so you can see they're all, all on there and uh, then underneath the uh, nose area there where it comes through that first little bulkhead there there's another one and then that one runs all the way down the keel and uh, into the baggage compartment so and you'll see in a second where I did that one. So this is in the baggage compartment. So I got one on there now. And so that one's not, you don't have to worry about anything shorting out on that one. And then uh, the, the corresponding side on the other side of that firewall there 
is uh, the one in the engine compartment that goes to the alternator and then uh, over to the starter motor and so that one is living right about there as you can see put the flash on so yeah I've got that one on there and then that other power cable coming out of there just sort of main power for the ECU and stuff so the next job was to uh, put the hardware in for these uh, holes there on the cowling where it mates up to the wing and uh, Jeff and Devin almost got this stuff done uh, I uh, finished it out so the, the first three holes there didn't have any nut plates um, in the wing skin and it's not possible to put them in there when the wing is on so my take was going to be well the next time the wings come off we can put the nut plates in there but in the meantime I'm just going to put a washer and a nylock on the on the back side there of those ones just to hold it together so that's what I'm doing there for the first three so I countersunk those holes um, into the cowling and then uh, just put the um, the screw with the little um, washer there tenement washer on there and then a washer on the back and a nylock and just tighten that up so that sorted that one out so I had both sides to do on that one and as I've been saying you know there's all these little jobs little niggly jobs that you know some of them can take 20 minutes some can take an hour or more depending on how fiddly they are um, and I've got you know my list of things that I've been working off and when I think of something new or I see something new I add it to my list and when obviously when I finish something I knock it off my list and my list seems to stay about the same length all the time I guess with what's left to do um, but yeah working through it all and these are all the little jobs and stuff that you just got to do to finish everything out um, no really getting around it and obviously you know a lot of things you're just sort of figuring out as you're going along um, kind of know that things have to happen but you you're not sort of thinking about it until you like get to the point like oh still got to do that you know <laughs> so uh yeah it didn't take long to do these these ones it was only about a half hour job to do both sides um to get those sorted out and the the first or the le the last three on each side already had the nut plates devon had already put those on the back side of the wing skin there so those were just a case of just putting the screws in there and holding them in or just tightening them up um, and as you can see there so I got the first two in there those are the ones with the nylocks and then the third one would be the same and then uh, here I'm just putting the very last one in of the ones that has the nut plates on the back so yeah getting close to finishing off I've still got to do some more things around the baggage compartment there some of the wiring that you saw just now in there I still have to put some little hard mounts in there just to hold all the wiring in place so the wiring looms so they're not sort of uh, flopping around in the baggage compartment and there's a couple more things I want to do like that in the uh, engine bay there as well but the sort of thing that you know you just start working through your list and getting things done and there you can see the first three there with the nut plates one two three and then the other ones up front there have a uh, washer and a nylock on there so that's that job sorted out on that side and I'd already done the ones on the other side here as you'll see so there you can see those ones are already done so that one's out of the way and uh, moving on to what the next job is going to be there you can see the same thing there nut plates and then uh, nuts and washers there on the last three so coming along getting there <laughs> slowly but surely all right so next job on the list is closing out the gap between the uh, four plane and the fuselage and you know when that was all trimmed and fit there it was a little bit rough in terms of uh, the fitment there so what I did there is I've masked up um, both surfaces there just uh, probably a quarter of an inch away from where the um, opening is and now I'm running a bead there of this um, the same stuff that I did on these uh, edges of the windows there. Well, I can't remember if I actually showed that, but anyway, this is um, a polyurethane uh, stuff. It's kind of just like regular corking, bit flexible, which is what you want. Um, uh, so you know, because there's going to be some movement around there a little bit with the flexing of the four plane under load. 
So uh, yeah, just running a nice big bead down through there to fill the gap and uh, make it so it comes you know to the edges of the tape that I have, the yellow tape, and then ultimately uh, go back down there and uh, run my finger along there just to smooth it out. And I find that just you know wetting my finger with some water just makes the um, stuff sort of uh, slip off your finger better rather than get stuck on it. So you get a a nicer little fillet down in there. Then I wipe off the excess and uh, wet my finger again and do it again. So go down there and tool. I've got it nicely sort of pushed down the f the fillet and then I've on where it overlaps onto the yellow tape. I don't have um, much of a thick sort of bead of it all. It's basically pushing flat onto um, the tape on either side. And that way when I come to peel the tape off, I leave a, a pretty good fillet already that just has maybe like a little bit of a lip where the tape was. And so ultimately I can come back there um, just with my finger again wet down and uh, just run it along there one more time. And you actually get a pretty nice uh, finished job on there without uh, too much mess. So did the underside of this uh, four plane there and I'd already done the one on the other side. And then on the top side, this section that goes from kind of mid cord length to the trailing edge uh, along the top of the fuselage there, did that as well. And what I'm doing there, I just had a little bit extra on my finger and there was a spot that I wanted to fill at the front on the top there. So I just put that excess in there and smoothed it out after the fact. Uh, but yeah, this didn't take too long to do. Probably, again, as I say in jobs like this, probably an hour total. Um, and by the time you, you know, clean up the surfaces there, wipe them down, dust off, you know, wipe off some alcohol, mask them up, um, you know, run your bead in there and, um, you know, run your finger down there to clean it up and then pull the masking off and any other lo little bit of touch-ups and, and then cleaning up before you know it. There's a, at least an hour gone doing uh doing the four different uh sections there but they came out good and it filled the gap because the gap in some places there was at least a quarter of an inch uh, the opening and so hopefully that um, the polyurethane there stays in there and doesn't uh want to fall out or anything like that but we'll see if it does it's not a big deal to just replace it again uh, anyway so while you're watching that so as i was saying before uh, i'm going to be going up to oshkosh there I'm going to be meeting with um, Elliot and Justin, who are going to be hopefully being uh, test pilots for uh, the aircraft after Oshkosh sometime, hopefully in August. Um, I think they said that's when they were going to be available. So I'll be meeting with them and me meeting with a couple of other people and just, you know, there's a few other things that I want to do up there, but for the most part, just enjoying the show again. Unfortunately, you know, I have to drive up again. I was hoping to be able to fly the Raptor up, but, you know, obviously that's not going to happen. Um, maybe next year. <laughs> we'll see. That's a long ways away. Anything could happen between now and then. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'll be up there and probably get up there a little bit early and uh, just be camping like I normally do and driving like I normally do. So it be good to have that uh, break again. It's been pretty hot in the shop there 93 again today and with really no breeze there so the hangar even though you have all the doors open it doesn't really there's not really any fresh air coming in there i really should have kept one of the fans when we uh moved shops but um it would have been helpful uh, but anyway so here i am just pulling the uh, masking tape off there as i was saying just doing it carefully and then i come back through there and uh, just run my finger back along that bead again and get it to look nice so that's um, that job pretty much getting done and what else do I have to do still oh, there's a bunch of different things also I didn't even show it I put the um, retaining clips back in the um, in the uh, aileron turnbuckles as well today after I'd been doing some adjustments on the on those turnbuckles just to tighten up the cabling so I've got them at the tension that I want to have them at right now, which is sort of around about 55 pounds. And uh, there seems to be, you know, not too much uh, slack or anything like that. 
in the aileron control so decided to put the re retaining clips back in there so that was another job that I got done and uh, I think uh, for the rest of the week I've got to look back through my list and see what's still to happen I've still got to put things like the uh, um, switches there for the landing gear up and locked position on the nose gear and also the main gears those have to be uh, installed and wired up and uh, what else have I got oh, there's a whole bunch of things I've got to put some heat shielding on the inside of the cowling there where the exhaust comes through um, to protect that and I've got a couple of different um, heat shield options on there so it doesn't get that hot there I think that exhaust only gets to about 600 degrees maximum so um, if I use that fiber frac stuff I think that can handle um, was it 1500 or 2000 degrees or something so I may just use that I've got the other gold stuff as well that can handle 800 degrees so I may use that well, we'll see and uh, other than that I'm hoping to get that that uh, adapter back maybe tomorrow who knows maybe Friday and get that on there so I can do some more taxi testing and do things like calibrate the magnetometer and uh, just see how the uh, engines performing now with the prop set so there you can see that one's done now it looks pretty good came out clean there's the one on the other side so that came out well and just to show you what it looks like on the top surface there is how I did it there on that first section there and over on the other side you can see there's the top surface there so I got that done and yeah that's uh, pretty much everything so far for this week so uh, tune in again on Saturday obviously Thursday's a vacation for Independence Day so I'll be taking that off but uh, anyway tune in again on Saturday and I'll see see what I have for you thanks again for watching